What I'm going to do is end this talk with a discussion of something that's facing us all right now, and that's Asian bird flu H5N1. This causes influenza. Influenza is with us all the time, various different kinds of strains. This is a particularly frightening one. However, there is no strong evidence as yet of human-to-human -human transmission. Right now, this is a disease of birds, uh, local fowl, poultry, wild birds. Our concern is that H5N1, which mutates rapidly, will ultimately go from person to person. Now, let me tell you a little bit about this virus, because it's relevant. Uh, there is, uh, each virus uh, has a single strand of RNA containing eight genes. Each gene can encodes a single protein. This very high mutagenicity rate, in other words, changing the kind of protein that's made from each gene, can happen by reassorting the genes by single base mutations, and it just changes rapidly. That's why we get new flu shots every year. And basically, at this time, we know that the transmission of H5N1 goes from ducks to either wild birds or to some cats, uh, tigers, lions, leopards, uh, house pets, uh, with a fairly easy transmission. However, from wild birds to humans does occur. It's not easy. You need very personal contact. And humans to humans, we haven't, there's not strong evidence for that yet. Our concern is that it might happen. And so what does H5N1 mean anyway? H stands for hemagglutinin, and that is a protein that sits on top of that cage that the RNA sits into. The function of that hemagglutinin is to allow the virus to bind to the host cell and allow entry of the RNA to do its bad stuff. N stands for neuraminidase. Neuraminidase is another kind of protein that's also sitting on the surface of the cell, and it allows newly formed viruses to escape and infect other cells. We have two antivirals out there now. One is called Tamiflu, the other is Relenza, and the neuraminidase is the target for both of these. And in fact, the best way to use something like Tamiflu is if you've not been infected yet, it will give you 80% protection for a while. If you've been infected, it will drop the viral load so that you're not as contagious. You'll still get sick, but you won't be as sick. Now, if we look at the history of flu viruses, the most serious flu pandemic occurred in 1918, and that influenza was H1N1 killed 40 million people worldwide, and H1N1 means a particular derivative of the hemagglutinin and the neuraminidase. 1957 flu was H2N2, killed about 2 million people. 1968 H3N2 killed about a million. I know that one very well because I caught that one. And let me tell you, a real flu infection is no fun. Their current uh, Asian bird flu is H5N1, as I've said. The scary thing about this guy is that right now it has a 50% kill rate, which is enormous. And humans have no immunity against H5, whereas we have some against H1, H2, and H3, which has been around for a while. So uh, what needs to be done? How are we going to deal with this? Let me just tell you first that using something like Tamiflu is best done, in my opinion, not by sprinkling ta Tamiflu amongst the 30 million people in the world, but rather using it where there's a hot spot. Now that we have an, an entire network of, uh, of reporting coming all over the world, keeping their eyes out for hot spots of sudden breakout of H5N1 possibly being passed from human to human, then our Tamiflu has to get there immediately. 
And then what you do is you cordon off the area, quarantine, treat with Tamiflu, and start vaccines. Now, clearly, the vaccine we have now is to the H5N1 that only goes between birds and possibly cats. What we will ultimately need, if, if this happens, if it mutates to human to human, is that we then have to get a new, a new vaccine that will be against that particular variant. And a lot of work is going on right now by many small companies and many large pharmaceutical houses to be ready to make this as quickly as possible. Now, uh, one thing that is important to realize is that vaccines are made in eggs. I mean, zillions of eggs. If you go to one of these vaccine production places, it's astonishing. It's like a football field of eggs. And a uh, virus gets injected into each one of these eggs, and then a high titer of more virus is made that's impaired. You kill it. You then make the uh, vaccine. Uh, the reason we use eggs is you get a very high titer. One thing that I can't stress too strongly is that, in fact, you can't get flu from a flu shot. It's dead. But you certainly can get um, uh, immunity. But people seem to think that vaccines are an absolute panacea. It's not true. Flu vaccines are 70 to 90 percent effective in young, healthy people, and only 40 to 60 percent effective in people over 65. 